What's going on everyone? This is Lee, the Video Game Trick Guy. Today I've decided to do a little uh, master workshop. Uh, so if you are in the business, specifically if you are new in the business, uh, or maybe you're starting around the August time, uh, maybe you're not in the business, I think there's going to be some good points made here. So a lot of the description is going to be in the YouTube description below as well. But if you want to take notes, by all means, please feel free to do so. Uh, today is July the 30th, 2022, and August for the video game truck, the virtual reality game truck business is sort of like the middle or the half point in the year. Uh, it's the middle or half point in the year because August school has been out for a couple of weeks to a month, and then we still have some time to September, which is almost a month or about four weeks. And so it's that time where in some states, business really slows down because people go on vacation. Uh, but in other states, business picks up. So depending on where you're operating in the country, August might be a slow month for you or it might be really busy for you, right? So that's one thing to consider. So there's two points I'm going to touch on first. Uh, if you are let's say this is your first year of business operations, whether you are happy where you are uh, business-wise or not happy, uh, first two points. The first one is uh, the footwork, right? Which requires time. And the second point is marketing, which requires money. So you either have time, you either have money, or if you are blessed, you have both, which means you can do the footwork and you could do the marketing to drive and grow your business, right? So for those of you who are, let's say, not maybe as lucky and you, let's say, don't have unlimited amount of funds because maybe you are, you just, you know, maybe you've been in business for a couple of months only, um, then you have to put in the footwork. And primarily this video is going to be about the type of footwork you could uh, put in and the structure, right? So if you have a structure, then you could put the footwork behind it, and there really are no excuses, right? Especially if, if the business isn't where you want it to be, right? You need to have at least a basic like path idea, even if there's no path in front of you, at least an idea of how you're gonna go from point A to point B. So uh, these are somewhat aggressive uh, tactics, but they do lead to goals. Uh, I hope that you have some goals for your business. So let's begin. So uh, this is now August 2022. So the first thing I would suggest is that you secure a good working relationship with at least three new fundraiser, fundraiser representatives in your area. Now, the span of that area can be 10 miles, 20 miles, 30 miles. That's up to you. But if you secure a working relationship with three representatives, three reps, uh, that could go a very long way for you, even if they only have a couple of schools that they're working with under their belt. It's a snowball effect if you build it right, right? So if, if, a, if a first rep has maybe four schools, another rep has five, another one has maybe 25, right? It all adds up, even if you can't get the, you know, the whales, the ones who have like 70 plus schools under their belt. And... One of the things to know about a fundraiser representative when you're approaching them is you have to understand them from their point of view. How do they make their money when they're working with a school or an organization, right? Because if you don't understand that part and you simply approach them and say, hey, we got this video game trick or virtual reality game trick. Can we work with you? They'll be like, okay, that's a cool idea, but I'm, I'm trying to figure out like, like well, how, right? Uh, for example... Uh, let's say that a certain rep uh, provides the, you know, let's say, virtual reality game truck as a uh, as an award, right, for students who sell the most amount of items. Let's say it's like 20 items, and uh, those who do that, you know, the school benefits, the fundraiser representative makes some money in benefits, right, and the end goal uh, is a certain like certain achievement right and so for many the virtual reality game truck uh is like the highest achievement that they can get because they sell an x amount of items requiring them to uh you know pass go and so uh 
you know, also you need to understand, like, if you're going to be working with one of these people, um, what are you charging them, right? Because if they're feeding you business and volume, right, and you have a good working relationship, it might not be the smartest thing in the world to uh, just charge them really at, like a, at a high point, like, because what you're doing is you're getting eyeballs on your business, you're growing your business, so something to consider, okay? Uh, the next thing uh, is contact the major school districts within the 30-mile radius. I mean, if you service a 40-mile radius, good. Um, and it's important to figure out the contact details first for the people at the top at the district. Who is responsible for what, right? Uh, it's fairly easy. If you type in school district like near me or whatever county that you live in, it's going to provide you with a lot of information. And so if you are already servicing a school district uh, as an operator or if that's what you want to do, that would be a good first step to find out what paperwork do you need, right? Uh, a lot of people don't do that, and I understand why. And the reason is a lot of operators are happy with the business that they have on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. But, and, but the thing is, if you approach your business and also go for it on, like, let's say, Monday through Thursday, right, that all spills over and grows your private business, but at the same time keeps you busy during the week, uh, and that is a great way to expand into a multiple truck operation, right, because you want to work seven days or six days, right, your business is going versus just the weekend. Again, there's no right or wrong answer, but you have to understand your approach. So step one is, does that particular district require something of you, right? Great question. What do they require? So get all that info and actually talk to people. And anytime I like, I, I talk to someone in a specific uh, niche or approach, right? Make a full spreadsheet. Hey, school or district, this district has these people who are responsible for this and responsible for that. And then you have to start making the phone calls and the connections and the physical face-to-face -face interaction, right? A lot of people don't do that, unfortunately. Uh, the next one is make a list of about 50 to 100 churches in your area, right? I prefer to start with like the larger church and then work my way down. Uh, again, you could do the opposite. Opposite also works. There's no right or wrong answer necessarily for this. Uh, and offer them a free 30-minute event, right? If this is your year one of operation and you're trying to drum up some business, uh, you're going to have to put in some work and give some stuff away for free, which includes your time, which includes some of the gas that it takes you to go to a location, right? People, a lot of people don't know what it is that you're even offering, right? So you have to put in the time. And if you're not going to put in the time and the legwork and actually have people experience an immersion, right? An immersion of the product that, you, uh, that you're servicing or, or the service that you're providing, a lot of people are going to be very hesitant, but even a five-minute interaction in a, in a virtual reality world that maybe a pastor tries or, or a couple of kids try from the church group, right? It instantly adds a point of reference as to, hey, this is really cool. When can we potentially book this, right? Uh, and because there's so many churches, this, this is a very easy way to get things rolling. Now, because it's a free event, I would probably say, you know, it's like first come, first serve. But it's definitely important to provide some stuff and time and show people in your community, in your area, hey, this is what we have, right? If the phone doesn't ring and you want more business, but you haven't done that and actually gave a people the point of reference, how are they even know what, why would they be doing what you're offering, right? So a lot of people just don't know. It's, it's a fairly new thing, virtual reality. Uh, if it's a regular video game trick, it's, again, it's very similar. There's just a lot more limitations on a regular video game trick versus a virtual reality game trick. Uh, but again, both work. It just depends what market you're in, right? Uh, the, the fourth one, uh, this is a very important one. I've covered this before. This takes time, and that's creating... Um, uh, a big email list, right? So if you don't have one, start creating one. If you have one, you can work it, right? You can work it. Um, again, I talk a little bit more about that in detail in my online training, but you need to start working the email list, providing people discounts, following up, um, and driving it, right? So uh, I found it that 
some operators never start or invest the time to build an email list. Uh, again, everyone runs their operation different, but there's a big difference between having like 15,000 and 30,000 emails that you of people that, that you service contacted or right, you have some form of a connection or working relationship with versus someone who doesn't do that. So uh, even if you do, let's say once or twice a month, you send out a general email to your 15, 20, 30,000 people, right? That provides a lot of traction. And sometimes people are like, oh yeah, I definitely want to book a party for event A, B, C, whatever the event, whether, they, whether it's a birthday or a corporate event. Uh, but building an email list takes time, right? Because, and you want to build a genuine email list. You don't just want to buy emails. You don't just want to try and track them down and pull them from, uh, <laughs> uh, from some website. These are emails of people that you can acquire throughout the, your years of operation really helps, but you got to put in the time to do that, right? Again, there's a whole system of how you work this. The next thing would be uh, take a spreadsheet. Again, I, I love doing spreadsheets. And within, let's say, like a 15 mile area, what you want to do is you go through the, all the schools and find out every single PTA contact, right? So in the spreadsheet, you have your a uh, 50 mile radius, right? Who are the PTA contacts? And then when you talk to them, again, you might have to do the same thing that you did, let's say for a church. Uh, you have to show them what it is that you're offering because as much as they may want to do it, like when you don't know things that you don't know, you, you're just out of luck because you don't know, right? So step one, get organized and get your spreadsheet of about you know of about 15 20 it depends how aggressive you want to go in your circle in your reach and then when you make the contact with a pta member say hey when are you guys you know or gals or again however you approach them uh when are you doing a meeting a general meeting or an event can we come by right can we show you our virtual reality game trip right uh very important and so by doing that again up, up front you're not getting paid right? You're not, but you're providing a point of reference. And with a spreadsheet, if you have, let's say 30 contacts, right? You need to start working those 30 contacts. You need to start following up and you need to be finding out uh, what they are trying to do. We're in August, right? We're about to enter August for the rest of 2022. And then the following year, right? What what are they doing? What are they planning? If you do not understand, if you're not involved in um, what different organizations are doing, it makes it, it puts you a step behind. And to do that, a simple spreadsheet and you just take some notes, right? Hey, I talked to Sally uh, from Seal Beach Elementary High School. Uh, they're doing three events. Uh, one of them is a fundraiser event. The fundraiser representative name is Jonathan whatever, right? I would then get his contact information. Notice how it's becoming linked. Uh, and then you can say, okay, these are the two events. And I would say, well, what is the goal of these two events? Is it raise, to raise money? Uh, is it to reward kids? Like you have to organize a lot of these things and you have to stay on top of it, right? There does come a time when you put in your enough work where you don't really have to do it. I mean, I would suggest you continue doing it, but you get so busy eventually that you could back off. But man, if you're starting, if it's your first year of operations, or if you're not simply, simply you're not happy where your business is, you got to push these points. You got to really attack them. All right. Uh, another one is make a spreadsheet and find out every after school club, right? that is within the vicinity is it sports is it uh engineering is it arts and crafts right like no one's gonna tell you these things unless you put in the research find out what they're trying to do and then offer what you have and maybe the first time hey even if it's 15 minutes for free then that's what it is right you're building a base from which you could then launch and grow your business and if you uh, again, if you're not happy, let's say, where your business is, you have to do that. You have to put in the time, right? But by doing that, that's that's where the ball starts rolling, right? And again, we're talking specifically um, if we separate marketing and we separate footwork. Again, if, if you could do both, great. Man, that's awesome, right? That's how you really just explode your company. 
uh, in a good way. But a lot of people don't, so at least you have to then put in the time. Uh, the next one is also no secret, and that is you look at all of the local city parks and rec, parks and recreation, and then you look. So first you want to find out, hey, what, who's in charge of doing what, right? And then the second thing is when are they doing any kind of events, right? Very important. I find that working actually with parks and recreation is a little bit easier than working with some other entities, primarily because a lot of the people who work uh, at Parks and Rec, a lot of them are just like part-timers, so a lot of them are teens. But, you know, if you just give them 20 minutes of your time and, and they could see what they're doing, they will suggest, hey, we have this great thing we could do for an event that's planned four months from now or whenever, right? So, again, you're making a spreadsheet, you're talking to different Parks and Recreation, and at the same time, you could find out if there's any specific um uh, things that they require in terms of paperwork because parks and rec is like its own thing right especially if you're doing an event at a park uh the next one is look at different cities and counties in the area uh some so here's a little trick i don't know if i shared this before so some counties and some cities well actually i think most of them uh, that have a at least somewhat of you know population maybe of a couple thousand people they produce either an email newsletter or they produce a uh, like a little pamphlet of things that are happening. Usually in these newsletters and or in these pamphlets, you have the names of people who run the city, right? Uh, these are the people like like this. This is almost golden information because these are the people who are in charge of planning budget and events. Right. So who do you need to talk to and find out more about that specific city? So if like some cities, they have a nice pamphlet and it, like a super awesome, it's almost like a little book. And a lot of times they do it like just just twice a year. Right. Like before summer, let's say, uh, because they want to show all the stuff that's going to be happening in the summer for after school programs for kids who are out of school. Right. Hint, hint. So uh, if it's a newsletter, right find out where it's coming from and again make another spreadsheet find out who is responsible for what what are they doing for the rest of 2022 and what are their plans for 2023 All right as a business owner you have to do a lot of this stuff you have to do a lot of research and you have to fill in the blank because no one's gonna tell you how to do certain things that's why you have to be malleable and understand you got to put in the work right if you don't have thousands and thousands of dollars uh, to put into marketing um, next okay next is what are the 20 biggest corporations in your area right it could be more i mean it could be a lot more than that but i try to specifically first look at corporations that are not national if possible but that are local to the county or the city we're talking one two location maximum but they're you know they're fairly big maybe they have like 20 to plus employees uh and uh you know one of the one of the things I would find out after going to their website and finding out who's responsible for what is, do they have something like an employee appreciation day, right? Uh, if let's say it's like a factory, uh, I've done this before, like at some paper mills, uh, they have lunches, right? And I'd say, hey, could I just like park and follow a food truck? Or if there's no food truck, hey, could I come out and uh, for lunchtime just park outside? And if anybody wants to go in and play for free and try some virtual reality for the like 20, 30 minutes, yeah, no problem. Great, right? And so to do that, you have to look at some of the local companies that are in the area. Once again, make a spreadsheet, make notes, keep track of things, know who you're talking to. Uh, because if Sally's the gatekeeper of a steel mill, right and you're nice to her and, and then when she understands what it is i mean and let's say maybe she uh not only did she now book it for her own child right down the line but now she's really like excited because oh this is cool like because she booked it for her child now she could book it for some other parents so they could see what's going on the whole thing is a snowball slash domino effect if you're organized and you're aggressive in your approach which brings me to the last part of today's video uh, I believe this is so uh, underrated, this following part. I believe the majority do not do this, and it's unfortunate, but maybe now that you're watching this video, you'll do it. And that is follow-up 
consistently with people that you've done business for in the past or in the recent past, right? When you're following up, that is a great thing, right? People forget, life goes on, right? And so it is, again, your job to let them know that you are servicing the business, that you're local to the area. And if you're not gonna follow up, that's gonna be troublesome. Another reason, so now, let's say you've done all this work and you have like maybe seven, eight, or 10 different spreadsheets with different people's information that are under different categories. But notice if you were organized and you put all that together, you have a lot of following up to do. So even though if you do all of that realistically, means that you actually make contact and talk to people and you don't just text or go on the phone, it's, it's an important part, phone calls and texts. But if you do not make that physical connection and it show people the immersion experience um again this is going to be hard so you have to do that and then you have to follow up there really is no downtime in this business if you want to grow it as long as you know what you're doing and if you don't have a plan if you don't know how to follow up if you don't have a structure behind it right and let's say if you're not marketing enough or i mean realistically you want to market and put money into marketing but at the same time you want to put in a lot of work and your footwork, right? You then, that's then combined. So your first year of operation, let's say right now we're August, uh, by the following August, things should be moving properly in your direction where you could grow your business and make some money. But it doesn't magically happen if you don't take into consideration, let's say some of the things that I said. So again, everyone right now, we're in August. This is like the midpoint. This is the time to regroup, reassess, see what you're doing and ask yourself a question. You know, do you want to grow your business? Do you just want to run it part time? Do you want to run it full time? And if you're not happy, you, let's say you are not happy for whatever reason, that means something needs to happen to change that, right? Solution based um, outcomes come from being organized. And I hope that in this video, if you took notes or if you just simply look at below of the YouTube video, the uh, description, you can make notes, follow some of these things and start implementing these tactics to help you grow your business. But again, it's, it doesn't happen overnight. It happens if you're consistent. With that said, everyone, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this short little uh, master class or master workshop on running your virtual reality or your video game trick business. If you're thinking about starting this business and you need some help, my contact information is going to be like right there. Go ahead and shoot me a text first so I know you're a real human being, and I'll be happy to talk to you and proceed and maybe get you into the virtual reality game truck business or help you out. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this. Hope you find it informative. Thank you so much. Have a super awesome morning, night, day, or wherever it is that you are in the world.